when we talk about uh, the compound poison process we should see that first of all it should be a poison process itself right when we are talking about any poison process we are looking at a few characteristics any process is basically uh, we we classify the poison process as a continuous type right in a continuous time and probably uh, uh, integer value the state space generally is uh, more and more of uh, discrete whereas uh, the time space has to be continuous and what we are uh, saying is uh, starting from a particular uh, n0 is equal to 0 the increments going to n1, 2, 3, they are all kind of independent increments and they follow a Poisson distribution. That is what we called as a Poisson process. Right, right from n0 equal to 0, there are independent uh, increments, the increment uh, at nt after a certain point of time t, at what state it would be there, it is completely uh, independent and it has, uh, it follows generally a Poisson distribution. So, from here going to state 1, state 2, state 3, it follows a kind of a Poisson distribution. So, when we say, e, so that is what we call as a Poisson process. Now, each of these y1, y2, y3, when, when they are independent and identically distributed and we have a Poisson process called NT means all these are following a kind of a Poisson distribution independently. y1, y2, y3, they are all different uh, random variables that are following uh, a Poisson distribution uh, independently then the summation of all of them, xt, which is uh, the summation of all of them, we are saying that it follows a compound Poisson distribution. Mean individually each of them are the results of uh, a Poisson distribution. The summation of all, means the total, if I take each of them as independent claim amount, At different state, we are talking about uh, the values independent claim amounts, right? Now, uh, at state 1, the amount could be something, right? The amount could be something. At state 2, the amount could be this plus something else. So, what we are saying is, if first of all, these are the individual claim amounts, the total claim that is coming, the total amount of claim, if I have to model, I can model it as a continuous, compo uh, sorry, a compound Poisson process because I am trying to add up all the individual claim amounts and put it as a compound value. So, here the claims can come at any point in time, which means it is operating in a continuous time. Whereas each one of them, they could be, if these are continuous, even this will be continuous. If these are discrete, even this will be discrete. So the state space kind of relating to this compound Poisson process generally is either discrete or continuous depending on the state space associated with these individual variables. Now, regarding the properties wise, stationarity. As per the definition of uh, weekly uh, stationarity, uh, we need the expected values and variance to be expected value, uh, uh, expected value and the variance to be constant. That is what is the meaning of uh, weekly stationary. Now, in this case, that cannot be possible because the expected value of the total claim amount, the more and more new claims keep coming up, the expected value is continuously growing up. 
So, because the expected value is not constant over a period, we don't see that this uh, compound poison process is even weakly stationary also. So, it does not exhibit any kind of stationarity, especially with the compound poison process. But it is still a Markovian process. The reason being, at any point in time, the dependency is only on the previous point. So, probably uh, the value xt is dependent purely on xt minus 1 itself. So, and the independent, the increments are completely independent. And whenever we talk about uh, the indip, because we have defined yi, yj as independent iids, independent, uh, uh, we have defined them as uh, uh, independent and identically distributed kind of uh, variable. So, let's say for x t, I would have done x t minus 1 and I could have added y j to it. Uh, so, that is what would have made me x t. So, which means it is dependent only on the previous state and the independence are, uh, increments are independent. So, we can very well consider a compound poison process as a Markovian process itself. Right? So, uh, the understanding uh, these kind of processes and their, uh, uh, and their uh, properties is very much important because uh, any real world application, if we have to model, we have to understand the underneath process behind it, right? Now, when we uh, talk about uh, a symmetric simple random walk, of course, it's a, it's a simple random walk itself, but symmetric. So, how does symmetric add up? How does symmetric uh, uh, work out here? Let's say I'm talking about, uh, again, a series of independent and identically distributed random variables. So, y1, y2, y3, so on, yn. Let's say they are independent random variables and they are identically distributed. Now, at any point, the probability of either going to the next step, which is probability of y equal to 1, or going back one step, both of them, they do have an equal chance of occurring then which means that there is a chance of going up as well as going down from the same state both of them have equal chances and when we are doing a summation of all such kind of processes mean either when and from this state i can go here or go here with an equal probability and I am summing up uh, all these uh, occurrences right from 1 to n. Such kind of process is what we are calling as a symmetric simple random walk process. And uh, what we typically uh, see is this symmetric simple random walk. You see at different points in time, at various discrete points in time, it has a discrete state spaces also because we are talking of y j's to be 1 or minus 1. We are not talking about 0 0.23s, 0 0.73s kind of stuff. So, there is a discrete state space generally in the form of uh, integers and at the same time discrete time space. After a particular point in time, either there could be an upward movement or could be a kind of a downward movement, right? And as we all know, if uh, this particular uh, probabilities are like uh, p and 1 minus p, in general where they lie between 0 to 1, we call it as a normal simple random walk. But if at all we are having specifically 0.5s as the probabilities towards increment and decrement, we are looking at it as a a symmetric simple random walk procedure, right? 
Let's look at uh, one question on Markov chain. A Markov chain with state space A, B, C. All right. It has the following set of properties. It is irreducible. When I say a Markov chain is uh, irreducible, every state can be accessed from every other state. That is what we call as uh, irreducible. Every state can be accessed from every other state. So, uh, we should be able to access uh, B and C from A. B should be accessible from A and C in some form or the other. So, that is what we are calling as irreducibility. Then we are saying it is periodic. When I say it is uh, periodic, the probability of staying in the same state, every state has to follow a same period. So, the probability of uh, staying in the same state, especially in case of uh, periodic distribution, probability of staying in same state will always be zero because in that case, if, if, it, if there is some kind of a probability that it can stay here, then generally it becomes a periodic. Periodicity will become 1. So, this kind of a looping cannot exist if a, if a particular uh, chain is periodic because uh, uh, it, it, uh, it has to keep moving to the other state. Then only it can have a period which is greater than 1. Otherwise, its periodicity could become 1 because the same state could be reached in 1, st one trip, 2 trips, 3 trips, A to C can happen directly or probably uh, for one state in A to A and then A to C which means two trips, three trips, almost it becomes the GCD of that will become one. So, it becomes a periodic. So, one simple thing for us to understand is if at all any particular state is periodic, then I can very well say that the probability of uh, staying in the same state is zero which means here I can simply reduce that P of AA or P of VB or P of CC. All these things are directly zeros. Now, if I am uh, starting off uh, looking at uh, a kind of a transition matrix, A, B, C, A, B, C. P of A, A is directly zero. B, B is zero. C, C is zero. Now, there is also one more statement. The probability of moving from A to B is equal to the probability of moving from A to C. So, P A B is equal to P A C. From here I can say because P A A is 0 and the total probability should be 1. I can say P A B and P A C both of them should be half. Okay. Then we are saying PAB is half, PBC, PAC is equal to half. Now, when I am saying the other moments coming from B or probably to A, there should be at least either this root or this root. Only one of the roots can exist. Only uh, one of the roots uh, can exist which will uh, lead to A either from B or from C. So, so probably a probability uh, from B A or probability of C A, at least one of them should be greater than 0. Then if let us say B A is greater than 0, there is some root existing from B to A. Then the root from C to B should not exist. If the exists, see if there is a root that is exists from B to A, the root from C to B cannot uh, exist. Then C to B, the probability of uh, C B can become 0. Otherwise, it does not uh, become irreducible. See, first thing, uh, uh, there is, to look at irreducibility, first of all, either B A or C A should be positive. Now, if I am assuming B A is positive, there should not be a root from C to B. If there is a root from C to B, then the periodicity is getting violated. Similarly, if let us say C A is greater than 0, 
then BC should become 0. If uh, CA is greater than 0, then there should not be any root from B to C. That should become 0. So, that is where we are seeing the probability of BC as well as probability of CB. Both of them are equal to 0. So, B to C, C to B, they are all becoming 0, whereas uh, B to A and C to A, both of them are becoming 1. Now, look at uh, the graphical part of it. Let's say I am looking at uh, A, B and C. Probability of moving from A to B is 0.5. Probability of moving from A to C is 0.5. Probability of uh, moving from B to A is 1. B to C is 0. Probability of moving from C to A is 1. C to B is 0. So, we are actually blocking the movement from C to B. So, anywhere, let's say I want to go from B to C. Go here, come here. Periodicity of 2. If I want to access C to B, go here, come here. Right? So, what we are simply are saying is, every state can be accessible from every other state, one thing. And uh, what we are also uh, seeing is uh, there is a periodicity that is uh, existing for the state. So probably if at all uh, A has to go to B, it can go only in either one state or come to C, go back and then come to B, which is the state 3, state 5. So it can be accessible only in uh, 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 a multiple uh, of 2 in, in an increment of 2 number of states. So, that is one of the prime reason this uh, particular state where this link is broken between the two is what is uh, creating this particular Markov chain. Right? So, that is how we have to understand uh, the numerical and try to uh, solve, the, uh, solve the questions pertaining to the same. Alright? Let's move on to the next question. 